insects have a total mass of about 1 billion metric tons on planet Earth. That's half the mass of all animal life on Earth. So they're out there. They outnumber us, obviously. They outweigh us. And uh, we're fighting this war against insects all the time. But uh, let's be honest with ourselves. It's it's more of a holding action than a, than actually a war that we're winning. And in a lot of cases, we're losing the fight. So it might be a good time to take a step back and uh, reassess our strategy. And maybe see if we can find some allies to help us out. Hello there, good people. Hi, I'm Jason with Green Country Agroforestry. And the introduction segment that you just watched is a small segment taken from a video that aired on February the 10th. It is entitled uh, Enemies and Allies. It was a live stream. And that particular video went on a little bit long and it dealt primarily with how to deal with pests in your garden using natural means particularly using other insects and other animals in your garden to eliminate pests for you. I wanted to make this video a little bit shorter and deal specifically with the problem of aphids. Now, among a host of different treatments for aphids include some neem oil, some sort of insecticidal oils, horticultural oil, possibly even a little bit of dish soap and water. However, if you use these things, you may also be harming the beneficial insects that could be helping you in your fight against pests. So, how do we get rid of aphids without using pesticides of any sort? Well, that's what this video is all about. We're going to pick up from a previous video regarding attracting ladybugs to the garden, which was made on February the 3rd, and that video was from uh, a live stream that we entitled Layers and Rolls. Layers and Rolls live stream on February the 3rd. If you want to watch the entire video, it's a good one. But we'll go ahead and pick up from there where we're talking about planting nettles, stinging nettles, to draw in the black aphids, which come out earlier than the green aphids. And this is going to cause the ladybugs to be able to build up their numbers by the time the green aphids arrive on the scene. And well, we'll get into that. And then afterwards, we'll turn back to that segment on enemies and allies, where we continue to discuss how to protect your ladybugs, among other things. All right, so here it is. Yeah, day. Now here's a fun fact. Not all aphids are green. There are some black ones, and the black ones tend to emerge earlier in the season. Incidentally, I picked this up from um, Michael Phillips. It was Michael Phillips. Anyway, they're attracted to plants like the stinging nettle. Stinging nettle, incidentally, are great accumulators of potassium, calcium, magnesium, and are right up there with the mulberry when it comes to accumulating sulfur. I didn't mention it earlier in dynamic accumulators because I wanted to mention it at this point. Uh, they aren't rich in vitamin, or sorry, they are. They are rich in vitamin C as well. So if those sort of things are important to you, uh, you might want to have some stinging nettle in your garden plant. Uh, if you aren't spraying pesticides and you have stinging nettles, those black aphids are likely to come along and start snacking. And that's going to attract the predator species that loves to munch on aphids, which is, of course, the, the lady beetle, the ladybugs. So that's a picture here of a stinging nettle and a couple of ladybugs making more ladybugs on the stinging nettle. But the idea behind this is if you have an attractor plant out there that you may not necessarily care so much about whether or not it gets nibbled on a little bit. It's going to provide the opportunity for the pest to appear on that plant, so it serves as a trap for one. And two, if you're not spraying, gives an opportunity for your predators, in this case, those ladybugs, to get started reproducing, eating aphids, growing their numbers, so that later on when the things that you do care about start coming in, you've already got a force of predators ready to get to, get to work eliminating your pest problems for to help us out. 
Now, all of you people that were here last week should be familiar with that picture that I've got up there on the screen. That is, if I can move the pointer around here, some aphids on a allium flower with a bunch of ants surrounding it here. And the ants are farming the aphids. The aphids are sucking the juices out of the out of the stem of the plant, producing honeydew, which the ants are drinking up because the ants love it. And the ants protect the aphids because the aphids don't really have much of a defense of their own. Number one enemy of aphids is, well, these guys. And this one here is a, uh, is a ladybug larva that is busy eating what looks like oh, stink beetles, I think. Stink bugs. But the ladybugs and ladybug larvae like eating aphids too. So if the ants try to protect them, and that's where we got our little cover shot here. Hurrah, the farm is saved. The ants have successfully brought down the fearsome beast, the ladybug larva. So they're doing their job, protecting their, their aphids, their little cows, from the predator, in this case, the ladybug. But what if we could do something to give the ladybug some help? Let me get back up here. What if we could do something to give the ladybug some help? The place where all this drama is taking place is up here in the herbaceous layer. And sometimes you end up in the fruit trees as well. But up here in the, in the herbaceous layer, where this ladybug larva and the ladybugs are running around, where the aphids are eating the aphids. The cat escaped from the bedroom. Oh, no. <laughs> She's in the heat. I'm sorry, guys. Cat. Rah. Ah. Let me have to throw things at you. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, but the ants here are the, are the interesting thing. All right. You may have heard somebody talking in, in, in tactical circles about the importance of controlling the high ground. And a lot of people think up here that, that that means you have to occupy the high ground. If you're up here on the high ground, you're looking down at the surrounding territory, you can see what's going on and you can attack from the high ground. That seems to make sense. But it's important to know that there's a difference between occupying high ground and actually controlling the high ground. And this is where it's important. The herbaceous layers in the high ground, but where do the ants live? They live down in the soil. So for the ants to get up to the herbaceous layer to do anything about the ladybugs, they have to travel across the ground. And that's where we have the opportunity to do something about them. Let me introduce you to our friend the lizard now i don't know what kind of lizard this is uh i wear a lot of hats i'm not a herpetologist i'm not an entomologist and although i'm going to be mentioning birds a little bit later on i'm not a, an ornithologist either i'm just a guy with google <laughs> and a lot of free time apparently but this is one of our buddies uh the common garden lizard or maybe not so common like i said i don't know which one this is there are i want to say around 7,500 different varieties of lizard that we could employ to aid us in the garden. And you may notice a few primary distinguishing features about lizards. They all have scaly skin. They're cold-blooded, which means they need large flat areas like this rock here where they can catch the sun's rays. Rocks are great, by the way, because they can absorb the sun's rays, heat up, and then release that heat slowly. Lizards need that. Uh, they also need a place that they can hide. They can take shelter. Little rock overhangs. Uh, rock wall is perfect. Um, you could use a broken vase, throwing the vase away, turn it over on its side. Give, let, let that be a place for the lizard to take some shelter. Stacks of rocks and bricks also work. But you give your lizard a place where he can take shelter from his predators, so the, uh, mainly the birds of prey. They're watching down from the treetops, trying to find a nice tasty lizard snack. And uh, provide him a place where he can warm himself up. And the lizard will be happy to go to work for you, devouring ants and other things in the garden. I did mention there are some common characteristics about lizards, scales, of course, uh, being cold-blooded, yeah. They like to eat insects, okay. They need that shelter and a place to warm themselves, all good. Not all lizards have legs, but you might want to know. There are lizards without legs or lizards with very short legs. Uh, those are called skinks, and there's another variety that I'm going to show you here. This one is called a slow worm, and although it looks like a snake, it's actually a form of lizard. He has eyelids, and if you look over here, where my mouse pointer is, little tiny ear holes. Snakes do not have ear holes, and snakes do not have eyelids. So if you see a little brown snake, and you see it blink its eyes at you, it's not a snake. It's a slow worm. And slow worms and skinks and that particular variety of lizards 
uh, have a little bit of a different habit than the, the than the ones that scurry across the surface of the ground. These ones do travel across the surface of the ground as well, but they also like to burrow into the soil. And while they're burrowing into the soil, take a wild guess what they like to go after. If you guessed ants, you're right. They love eating ants. As a matter of fact, they're often found in association with ant nests. So here are two great allies for the ladybugs, the lizard stopping those ants as they come across the ground and the slow worm going after the ants where they nest in the soil. The slow worms like to have a little bit of additional help as far as shelter goes. They like uh, herbaceous perennials that come all the way down to the ground cover layer providing lots of shade, preferably with lots of leaf litter underneath them, keeping it nice and moist. They like to have moist, cool environment to burrow down into. And if you have that, you have a good chance of being able to attract and keep these two helpful warriors to aid your mighty ladybugs in their quest to uh, keep the the aphids from devouring your plants. Oh, okay, I'm looking at my show notes here. It says there's over 6,000 species of lizard. I was off by about 1,500. Who's counting, right? Who's counting? Uh, the picture I've got up here is another ally in the fight against the aphids. That is a hoverfly. It may look like a bee, it may look like a wasp, but that's just done to confuse predators. This little fellow, can be attracted to your garden if you have flowers like this one here. What is this? Some sort of aster, dandelion? I don't know. They like bright colored flowers. I, and I don't know because it's such a close picture of that flower. No, it's not a dandelion. I think it's some sort of aster. They like nice bright colored flowers. Yellows, pinks, and whites. Something that really stands out. And they like open structured flowers because hoverflies don't have long tongues the way uh, uh, butterflies do or hummingbirds with their long long snouts that they can get in there and get to the nectar in, in deep belled flowers. So broad open flowers, uh, dandelions, uh, echinacea, purple cone flowers, things like that. If you have those, and I believe I read somewhere that they like dill as well because it has a whole bunch of tiny little flowers that it can get to. They like to drink nectar. Uh, that's what they do. So as an adult, the hoverfly goes around and pollinates your flowers, but it's the larva of the hoverfly that go out and attack aphids and thrips and little leaf hoppers and leaf biners and things like that. So they'll lay their eggs on the surface of the plant. The eggs will hatch, the larvae will go out and they'll find all those little nasty uh, leaf burrowing pests and attack them and make more hoverflies, which provides you with more pollinators. And they're kind of cool. They don't possess stingers and they don't bite, so don't worry. Hey, that's all I've got for you today, good people. As always, if you found the video informative or entertaining, you know what to do. I'll catch you.